finally 10 new GTA 5 screens. Mini guns, skydiving, we've got helicopters, and we've got what I think is the first hint of an Instagram style photo messaging service. Hello, welcome to this week's GTA 5 o'clock. I'm co host Dan Dawkins. Unfortunately, no Tim Weaver this week, who has chosen a brilliant week to take a holiday. He's currently sat on a sun lounger, just like Michael from GTA 5, probably cursing his uh, mojito and wishing he was here to witness 10 brand new GTA 5 screens. At last! Eureka! We've got them! I'm joined today by GTA 5 production maestro, James Jarvis. Hi Dan. And we're going to power through the 10 screens and we're reacting literally this happened like less than an hour ago. Yeah, it's very exciting. We've had to throw the episode we had <laughs> planned in the bin and we're starting again. It's super exciting. Uh, just before we kick off, I want to say don't forget to subscribe to the show. Click the screen now and you can get our weekly GTA 5 show every Wednesday at 5 live to you wherever you watch it from. Also, big thank you to everyone who's joined us on Twitter and our address is at GTAVOClock. Uh, community's really burgeoning. We're first to share links just like this. Brand new screens. James, let's go. Let's, let's go. talk new GTA 5. Yeah, first screenshot then, Dan. What have we got? We've got the picture of what is GTA's version of Santa Monica Pier, quite clearly. Yeah, this is uh, yeah Santa Monica Pier. That's not the technical name in GTA 5. In GTA, this is called the Del Perro Pier. Uh, it's distinctive by its giant Ferris wheel. Yes, and it's a uh, little roller coaster on it as well. Uh, this shot obviously is very exciting because it shows sort of the dynamic weather systems we're going to get. We've got some mm. lightning there, we've got choppy waters which will obviously affect you when you're sailing around on your boats and things. Um, but so yeah, like first instance of it being not quite as sunny as we expect. Yeah, and as James just hinted, it raises interesting questions about how dynamic weather might affect your ability to do certain things in the world. Like for example, if you were inside an aircraft liner and there was to be a lightning storm, is that suddenly an increased risk? Yeah, well, that is bad for you. That is that's going to take down a plane. If you fly into a, a thundercloud, yeah, I mean, that's massive implications, possibly. That sounds insane. And you know, then you think, could a lightning strike take down a plane? Probably not. I mean, that would be insane. But, you know, that's quite exciting. Uh, we're also seeing the stormy seas, like you say, which could affect control. Yeah. Uh, we're also seeing a different view of the pier that we haven't seen previously. We've seen this pier from the other angle in different shots. Uh, obviously in far more idyllic conditions. But here we are seeing sort of where it goes down to the promontory mm -hmm. and almost an area where you could possibly access the sea. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, as we'll expand upon, another shot, another perspective on a familiar scene. And you Anything? can, uh, so, one more thing, yes I yes. do. Uh, just uh, in terms of the lights really, uh, imagine like if you're out at sea, even if it's not stormy and like, it's just going to have that magical sort of glint with the with the roller coaster and the Ferris wheel there that you'll always be able to see as like a reference point. I think that's going to be like really nice just to be able to cruise along the the oceans and see you know get a good bearing of where you are. Oh, James, my mind is ready. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, a skyline, uh, sort of dusk possibly or mm. early morning. Mm. Yeah, a little bit of a quasi lens flare effect as the sun's coming up or setting. As you say, we don't really know. Um, in itself not that exciting a screen because it's a couple of like semi-built skyscrapers yes as we just said though the reference points are critical because we're seeing buildings we know from the trailers and previous screenshots from new angles and you can see the construction crane yeah it's becoming sort of quite an iconic landmark almost within the, the you know the background uh, and also the uh, the main building on the right is familiar to me but not so familiar i can remember its name <laughs> reacting off the cuff james no and and if you're throwing it to me to come up with that name uh, we're going to let the people in the comments just point us out what that is because um, we're not quite sure yeah. what it's called. And apologies because we're reacting literally instantly to these shots. We'll have a full in-depth investigation next week. But yeah, but you're right, Dan. The crane is, we have seen before. Is, do you think it's the same crane that is in like the trailer that we've seen under construction with the big thing on the side of it, like the poster? Uh, yeah, I think it's the other side of that. And I think it's a, I think it's a deliberate ploy on Rockstar's part to mm -hmm. show us glimpses of the world from different angles to build up a picture. Um, also worth noting in this picture, um, I haven't been able to zoom them in and crystallise them just yet, but there are two significant sort of pieces of advertising. Uh, one is in the sort of bottom mid-left, 
with this sort of a set of words, almost like you'd see in LA for advertising a new TV show or yeah. something or a big brand. And then actually further back and deeper, there's like a blue sky poster with almost like a Chad style figure uh, wearing a hoodie and possibly a pair of eyes. Now, whether that's like some sort of cartoon character or a face mm. or an icon brand logo, I can't tell really. And we'd have to zoom in and probably sharpen the detail. But uh, yeah, that's something to look out for. Definitely. Okay, next screen. Oh, underwater. Yeah, this confirms again what we know, that Rockstar have mapped a huge explorable ocean bed for GTA V. Uh, we've seen submersible vehicles, which presumably could take you way out into the deep. We've seen sharks. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. And what we're seeing here is like you genuinely exploring um, a fairly beautiful looking bit of underwater covage. Yeah, it's really nice. And uh, I don't know if, if our listeners and viewers remember a few episodes ago when you mooted the point of maybe there being a, a sort of <laughs> underwater city to go and find. But hey, look, he's diving around and in the seabed. Dan, you might not have been entirely wrong. Lest we forget the <laughs> monolithic monuments of Moon. There they are, yes. Uh, hopefully we can flash a little link on screen to see that episode. But yeah, that, that is based on a real life theory that uh, people in the area have constructed about there being like ancient monuments around the coast of Los Angeles. Um, you know, hey, we'll see. But if you're building a huge underfloor ocean bed, you would want something to find. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've sort of scribbled down like we can see plant life there so obviously there's going to be plant life in the sea uh, possibly you know some of them might be poisonous or damaging to your health like spewing out toxins and stuff and you'd expect there to be some form of collectible sort of underwater yeah there'll be something like that and i've also i quickly went through and i lightened this image to see if like secretly there was a shark with a top hat in the background <laughs> is there uh sadly not oh. uh, neither a shark nor a shark wearing a top hat <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, that just seems to be a nice, again, scenic, well-lit shot uh, mm. demonstrating the underfloor bed. And the, the scuba gear is quite uh, prominent in it. Uh, so I imagine if you're wearing that, you might have some kind of oxygen gauge if you're doing it in-game and that kind of thing. Yeah, you'd think so. Otherwise, you'd be like the infinite swimmer, <laughs> which would be weird. Right, next shot. Yes. Okay, we've got a giant load of sky, a plane, and a man skydiving. Now, that's almost the extent of what you can say about it, but do you think there's more to add here, James? Uh, well, obviously, the fact he's wearing a helmet um, is we've not seen before in the skydiving shots, so does that mean that this is part of a actual mission, or because I'd imagine when you're skydiving normally, you don't you just sort of go away and you just jump off wherever you want, but having the actual outfits might suggest this is from a different type of thing in the world, mm. and also I think that plane looks to be like a big sort of passenger plane type yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, so whether he has actually jumped from that plane or not, I mean, you'd assume that he has, but you don't know that. Yeah, I mean, if he's if that's a specialised guy... I mean, it's either he's wearing a motorcycle helmet because he's fresh off the bike and he's somehow on a giant passenger airline and he's escaping, or it's a sort of form of specialised skydiving gear, mm. which would be not unlike something you might have seen in previous Metal Gear Solid games where Snake wears his halo jumpsuit yeah, yeah. where you know you jump from an incredibly high altitude and you, know, you think that uh, a plane would classically fly at about 30 to 35,000 feet mm -hmm. that's much higher than like a standard skydive so um, yeah specialised gear would certainly be the way forward for that so whether this is the conclusion to a particularly insane mission or whether it is like a side mission as we speculated where you're performing like extreme ultra yeah, dives. Yeah, like highest skydive and things yeah, like that. Yeah, it could be yeah. stuff like that. I mean, that's entirely possible as well. Uh, possibly worth noting, though it might be nonsense, <laughs> is that his sleeves are like white and different colour to his suit. There's a lot of shots of Franklin wearing like two-tone clothing where he's got like a white long sleeve undershirt and a different colour top shirt. So could it be Franklin's giveaway white long sleeves poking out you know, he's wearing a helmet, I literally can't tell. I was going to throw out there if you wanted to suggest who it might be under the helmet, but it looks like you've already decided on Franklin. Franklin, if I had to bet, okay. please don't make me. Next screen. Well, lots to say about this one, especially the fact he's holding a minigun! An actual giant minigun. Um, firing at what, what you'd assume to be like a wall. So, I mean, this would probably lay credence to our sort of... Uh, 
the sort of mini get like the side missions when you get to clone cause loads of carnage because it looks like a lot of things are on fire there that car has blown up it just seems to be going on a bit of a rampage yeah i mean it looks like you say a classic rampage mission or again it could be uh, a snipper of a mission gone spectacularly wrong mm-hmm. or right um it's not i i couldn't make out there's writing on the post in the white in the background now looking at it here i don't know if it says like i think it says corner corner maybe that, that wouldn't be that revealing i thought it said maybe coroner does it say that cox coron coroner coroner possibly say the coroners i'm saying the coroners okay um which you know again would say that there's uh, you're going to get some dead bodies out or something you know i couldn't say and again i wouldn't want to speculate too much at this stage but you can also see fire raging in the background yeah, good fire as well yeah good fire possibly dynamic fire We've seen in the early uh, trailers and from the Game Informer preview talk of Trevor who throws a petrol mm-hmm. bomb and it causes like a scorching, you know, breath of flame. It looks like here the flames have caught fire on the trees and, you know, the situation's getting pretty out of control. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, do you want to speculate what kind of type of car that might be? I thought it might be a Dodge. You can't quite make out the badge, I don't think. I think you're right. I, I, I haven't looked at it, but that sounds entirely sensible to me. It looks kind of like one of the police-style cars, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so again, we don't really know whether this is uh, a mission or just a random side mission, but certainly exciting to see him blazing a minigun. Yeah, also but... noting that he's wearing a bandana scarf over his mouth. That'll have significance later on when we discuss another detail related to appearance. Okay, next screen. Uh, nighttime screen. Yes. Uh, I would suggest that this is probably one of the uh, most in-game shots that we've seen. Uh, it looks like, I mean, the rest of them are obviously really good and really high quality. Mm. This, I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with it. It looks brilliant, but it, it's got that sort of in-game look to it that is like slightly, like you could see it from this angle. Yeah, there's a bigger debate to have about the general quality of these screenshots and, you know, th- conspiracy theories about... It are these sort of PC render mm. screens and is this secretly going to come out on next gen uh, I'm probably not in a position to have that debate again now but you can watch previous shows yeah. uh, related to that uh, as James says this seems like a bit more in game looking uh, certainly in terms of the framing and the distance uh, what I've noticed is apart from the, you know, the view of the city the sort of moody night sky and the spotlight um, they're clearly pursuing what looks like a getaway car Looking at the quality of the car, it looks kind of like a Lamborghini-style mm-hmm. car, big performance sports car. Franklin is a repo man yep. who does take hold of extremely nice cars. So it's not impossible that you know, it's Franklin at the wheel of that car being pursued. What's also worth considering is if you look a little bit further back, and you can see the rows of seating, like a sort of semi-amphitheater yep. and a stage. The same sort of theater is visible in the screenshots that have been released of Trevor climbing the Vinewood logo. Right. Uh, and when you see Trevor, I think, hanging off the D of the Vinewood logo, uh, in the background of that shot, you can see uh, that stadium. Now, whether this is related to that scene, either set before Trevor climbs the logo mm. or afterwards, you know, possibly with Franklin racing to get him, possibly with Franklin racing away from the scene, you know, who knows? But Trevor's here hanging off the D of the Vinewood logo, surrounded by police clearly being pursued and under pressure. So I think the geographical link, at worst, gives you a better picture of the scenery, possibly hints to a mission. And we, and we, as we've said before, uh, that like we weren't sure if those shots were just from a mission or they were just sort of general free roaming play where he's just mm. like got himself into trouble and the police are after him. But as you say now, if we can see that this shot relates to that shot and like there might be some kind of correlation there, then that's really yeah. exciting. I, 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 if I was, again, forced to bet, I would say that there's a mission where you, you interact with the Vinewood logo mm. just because it's such an iconic piece of scenery. Rockstar would want to lead you there by the hand on the off chance that you never actually explored it. So yeah. I think they, they want to... And, and it's a brilliant device to create framing. So, you know, you can pan out from a key scene and see all the Vinewood logo in one shot. We know the game uses dynamic music, not just mm-hmm. soundtrack. So you could create a scripted, cinematic Hollywood moment. You know, literally a Vinewood moment. Yeah. You know, coming out of the sign. So that would be really exciting. Um, I've probably got little else to add apart from the fact that the spotlight, again, hints at a sort of degree of surveillance. Uh, the way the police might chase you when you've got wanted stars, uh, and also this sort of thing we've talked about with 
uh, police vehicles and other vehicles having cameras, mm -hmm. almost like you're the star in a um, police camera action style movie. Yeah. Uh, and that will hopefully relate to a screenshot coming up just in a minute. Okay, now we've got a beautiful picture of a bridge shimmering in the sunlight. Uh, this is the area sort of leading on towards Mount Chiliad and the countryside. Yeah. Uh, have you got more to add, James? It's down in, I imagine, the, like the Salton Sea area, uh, which is where we expect this to be taken from. Um, I'm, I'm one, I think, if I'm correct, we've seen that bridge before, like you say, just from a different angle. Mm. It looks like the, the bridge that I'm not sure how long ago that screenshot came out, but I'm sure we can flash it up on screen uh, to show the correlation between the two. Um, it's, yeah, it's on the outback. The trees, I was going to mention briefly, um, that they look like proper formed trees rather than just sort of triangles and things, yeah. which is always nice. Um, and it's just a nice shot. Yeah, I think, like James says, it gives you a framing of a piece of scenery we've seen before. Um, it's not the bridge we've talked about on a previous show where we said the train no. come, emerges from and you know you see Trevor jumping off from the train collision it's not that particular bridge uh, what's worth noting is if you look in the top right of the screen there's almost like a sort of beachside settlement area mm. uh, that we're seeing sort of up in the top right now, I wonder if that is in fact like you know the, the Salton Sea yeah. From, yeah. A, from a different angle which again gives you a nice little sense of geography because we've seen Trevor on, on a sort of beachy sandy area mm. pointing a gun at a man which looks like that is the sort of kind of area the way he would be doing that yeah, so um, yeah, I think that's all I've got to add about that. Anything more, James? No, let's move. Let's get, let's get to the next one. Cool. Next shot. Trevor riding a kind of Harley-esque, uh, you know, high-mounted mm -hmm. uh, bike, uh, donning a helmet, which is unusually safety first for Trevor. Um, now, what also worth noting is he's clearly being pursued, which seems to be a theme of Trevor's yeah. exciting life. Uh, there's a dude literally hanging off like a station wagon behind him, or like... Um, some sort of jeep or something, a jeep truck, whatever yeah, you call it. A jeep truck, yeah, one of them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right up there with my leaf blower thing from the other week. Um, so what's also worth noting is that character, when you zoom in a light in the image, it's still impossible to discern his features. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that character is overtly significant in some way, as in it's either someone you know we haven't seen who's a key player, or it is possibly a returning character from elsewhere in the series and his identity is being obscured. Yeah, because you're right, the the lighting is all wrong in that shot. If that you know that character in the background should not be totally black like that. Like it seems like there's been some work done on it. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean I'm not I'm not a sort of global environment lighting expert to your surprise, but I just think it's a bit weird that he's especially dark. So it seems like a degree of concealment is, is at play there. Yeah, and also, uh, just worth noting as well, even further back in the shot, you can see another car with two more people hanging off it. Oh, good spot. So it could be that, I mean, that can you hold, hold on to the side of cars now in, in GTA Five, and, and that's sort of like how you can transport people around as well? True. Unless it's a, a brave new craze sweeping the nation of men who like hanging off the side of car doors, but... It's very weird that like a couple of cars would have people hanging off them. Yeah, well, I, I speculate that this maybe could be a gang. Like all the cars look sort of the similar. The men are sort mm. of hanging off them in the same way. Mm. So maybe uh, Trevor's gone along and blown up someone's bar, and they've got a bit <laughs> annoyed about it, and now he's having to escape. I think gangs are a really good shout. Uh, it's something we'll explore in next week's show. Like, but we'll, we've talked about like uh, there being sort of Mexican-style gangs, triad gangs, uh, mafioso gangs, mm -hmm. possibly an Irish gang. You know, all those factions will be available within GTA V, we've heard. So, um, yeah, it could well be tied to that. Uh, next shot. Okay, this shot, at a glimpse, isn't that significant. Um, <laughs> it's the wind turbines we've seen in previous shots, yep. again, lending us a frame of reference. Uh, it's a nice sports car. Who I don't know offhand. Do you, have you been able to ID it? Uh, black. It's my ID. Black car with some nice red tail light effects. Interesting. Uh, but obviously a not a sort of run of the mill car. It looks like it's quite high performance. It's not probably top of the range like in the other screenshot that the police helicopter is chasing. But in between the two. Now my suspicion, and this is purely a theory I've based, you know, just based on an hour's reaction, but it links to other things we've talked about on the show about GTA 5 and the nature of social media, I suspect this screenshot could be more significant than it first appears. Because if you look at it, the coloration and hue is unnatural 
slightly yellowed, a bit sort of sepia tone mm. in, in the edges, uh, and there's a huge streaking trail from the lights. Now, I don't think you've modded your lights to add neon lasers from the back, so I think it is kind of like a post-processing effect. You're right, it's got a little vignette around it as well, like the, the corners of, of the whole yeah. image are slightly darkened and stuff, so yeah, it, it now you've mentioned it, it very much suggests that this is a, a modified shot. But yeah, in the way that you'd be able to modify it in game. That's what I think. I think this could be the first hint at an Instagram style photo sharing service within GTA 5 where we've already said that your, you know, Rockstar said your mobile phone won't be primarily used to, you know, receive phone calls asking you to play darts with your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. It will be a modern enabled smartphone, internet connected and all the features that suggests. Now, one of the key features of modern smartphones is that they're an excellent camera. Yeah. Uh, and at any time you can take photos or you can take video and it's very easy to share them online. It's easy to add post processing effects to your snaps and, you know, gain kudos for taking cool shots. Yeah. Now, you know, if you were to be taking a cool screenshot of you cruising like this, that's quite a nice, exciting thing. And, you know, Rockstar could use that either to share in game or to create like an external website where people share their photos from GTA 5 you know, Instagram style photos. And in fact, you know, if you weren't already planning that Rockstar, I'd suggest you do. Yeah. That's a brilliant idea. I was you know? gonna say, like, imagine if if you do take these kind of photos in game and in an Instagram kind of style, mm. and then when you're sort of online in sort of free roam mode or something, and you go to the world map, all of the everyone's photos pop up as like, here are the hot spots of where everyone's been taking these cool shots. Yours is pretty good, this one's the highest rated, that kind oh, of Oh, that's awesome. If the main game map was like, you could almost go into each region and go, these are the top five ranked snaps yeah. in the Salton Sea, top five snaps in the city centre. I mean, wow, it would be almost worth playing GTA V just to take beautiful photographs. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, and if you consider the way that the modding community has taken and run with this in different games, I always think of Skate or you know, Skate 3 and it's an amazing Skate mm. Reel and the ability to, to share like user videos and cut and edit them. GTA 4 on PC added an explicit video editing mode. Yep. Rockstar have experimented down this line before. It's the natural progression. It's perfect social media fodder. And like would add another layer of depth to a game that's already pretty, literally, oceanic deep. Mm. Nice. Um, right. Next shot. Last shot. The final shot. It is Michael doing his best impression of Bono. <laughs> leaning on what looks like a sentinel car. Now, two things to know. One, he's wearing spectacles a bit like Bono. That's a bit weird because he's not been seen with these previously. It might suggest possibly something about the level of customization within the game yeah, and the ability to wear silly specs and slightly modify your character's appearance. Something I'm wondering is given the very deliberately posy and framed nature of the shot, and the fact that it appears in the sequence Rockstar released just after the sort of post-processing shot, is this a different version of a way of saying, yes, we are doing photo sharing? Mm. Because it's a very, it's the sort of shot, you know, like um, a traveling middle management salesman would put of yeah. him leaning on his new Audi that he's, he's mortgaged his house again to get, you know, it's that sort of, look at me commercial badass <laughs> um, and I, it's just got that massive posy feel about it and I, I think it's not like a natural in-game pose or capture no you're right it really yeah it looks it looks sort of staged I mean uh, I guess another thing to say is the area that it's taken in it looks like possibly it's out the back of some kind of shopping district we can see sort of like the pallets with boxes on and things so I mean that the building to the left could be a big warehouse there is a sign behind him which starts with a W and has some other letters in, but I don't think, Dan, we can what? work out no. what that could say. Wharf, maybe. Maybe it's somewhere down by the docks, but, mm. but you know, we're never going to be able to move the car out the way. Oh, yeah, okay. I've just discovered something. Zing. This will be a massive uh, zinger for people who've watched the previous episodes. We've noted repeatedly in GTA V and its screenshots the proliferation of CCTV put surveillance cameras in the world. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about the role of the blimp possibly being a surveillance thing, tying it all into the idea of almost like we just discussed social media sharing, video editing, you know, you're the star of like an alternate reality TV show almost. Um, 
in the middle left of that screen on the side of the building there is another CCTV camera yep um, and you know even from what we're seeing of, of people doing at the moment like Ubisoft are doing with watchdogs when it's all about surveillance and stuff and the possibility that some of the cameras in that may be player controlled like I mean even if they integrate something like that into GTA 5 like if you were doing police missions you got yeah. access to all the cameras yeah. and you could track people and, and that kind of thing Oh, that would be awesome, and I think it, it, it's quite likely. Um, another, and again, oh, I say quite likely, could also be nonsense. But, um, you know. <laughs> a good theory. Yeah, it's a good theory. Um, I don't know, if, I just want to quickly flip through the shots for, as we're on air. Um, the brickwork on that building, is it similar to the place we said might be the coroner's? Um, answer? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. Um, I'd have to see. Yeah, it's the same yeah. colour. It's, it's the not, same style. It's not dissimilar. Now, what would be very weird is if out the front of the building, Franklin's weedy in a minigun and on, on the verge of death, <laughs> and out the back, Michael is posing for snaps in his shades. Yeah. Um, they're probably not scenes being shot concurrently. Um, yeah, quite bizarre. And I think for me, that's kind of what I've got to say about the screenshot. Yeah, something to add to your, to, e to enhance your theory of there being sort of Instagram style mm. photos in this. Um, the album that Rockstar have released, all of these. Uh, screenshots under they've titled sunset sea, seas skies and so on now snaps also begins with an s so i am saying <laughs> that you know that's another word for taking pictures maybe it's all related i think the the title of sunset seas is and it sounds like a scenic photo album mm. um that's possibly deliberate um given that if they are hinting that you will be able to take pictures of this beautiful world yeah um you know, maybe I've become another, a fantasist. I wouldn't say become a fantasist. I literally am a fantasist, <laughs> but hopefully one based in evidence. And perhaps right now we're giving you a big old scoop. Cool. Well, I think that's uh, a brief overview of the shots, Dan. Tim will be back next week probably to discuss them in more detail until we get some more shots. Um, but just a quick shout out to Twitter followers again. Yeah, don't forget, follow us on Twitter for all the latest breaking news. That's at GTA V O'Clock. That should be on your screen right now. Above all, don't forget to subscribe to the show by clicking on the screen right now. You won't miss an episode. It's every Wednesday at 5 p.m. We're always full of analysis, latest info, screen, speculation, insight. We're the fastest growing show on all of YouTube, currently ranking number one for YouTube rankings. Thank you so much for supporting us and getting us where we are in such a short time. It really means a lot to us. Thank you for all your comments. Now in a new feature, we'd like uh, to take one of your questions every single week um, and then answer it in the next week's show. So if someone's got a great question uh, they wanna ask down below in the comments, please add it. We search through them all, we read everything, even the mad insults and jokes about our accent. Um, please do put a question in. We promise we'll read the, ne the best one next week. But again, thank you. And until then, am I right, James? Yes. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.